One of the real interesting aspects of MIP in these last few years is the contribution which Manchester has made to really intelligent debate about the role and functioning of cities uh, throughout the world. Uh, we, as a city, not got just uh, an important contribution to make to Greater Manchester, we have a fundamental contribution to make to the north of England. Jim uh, is a professor, a recently appointed professor at Manchester University, and is also uh, chairing uh, a commission, uh, an independent commission, which is evaluating the opportunities for cities in the UK in terms of driving uh, economic growth. And his contribution today is going to help to shape that global context within which cities like Manchester must perform. Jim. Um, it's uh, very nice to be here. I think I am now. Uh, I was severely tempted to walk straight out of the room when Howard said that about Blue Moon. Uh, some of you will know, but maybe not that many of you know, I kind of bat for the red half of Manchester. And this is one of the few weeks in the past uh, year when we've been able to sort of smile a little bit more than usual, but there you go. Anyhow, uh, I am here to... Uh, amuse and entertain you for a few minutes. Uh, I guess that I'm going to show you a few pictures um, sort of linking two parts of my life uh, about <clears throat> the ongoing changing nature of the state of the world uh, and secondly uh, the importance of cities uh, within them. Uh, and I have to say just uh, listening and watching Howard introduce uh, Manchester's role in all of this and mine sort of went through my head, Howard, that maybe you are actually determining more of my life than I realised. Because <laughs> I, I, indeed I am now a, a, a professor at Manchester University and my whole interest in the city's thing came with the uh, Manchester efforts and my presence here uh, a number of years ago. So I kind of wonder what you got lined up for me next, but there you go. Uh, so with that in mind, let me just try and show you a few pictures. So, there are sort of three or four strands that, that I'm going to focus on that sort of have connections to them. So I guess the first thing in terms of the, the, the global economy, um, this is a, a pic. Can you see this picture clearly? About This is a picture of uh, PMI stands for Purchasing Managers Index. It's, uh, I won't bore you with what it is, but it's, it's probably on a monthly basis the most accurate evidence of what exists about the state of the world. And if you look we sort of, since the, the bounce back of the horrors of 08, we've sort of been treading sideways, so to speak. But if you look at the very latest indicators, we're sort of showing signs of, of trying to do better again. What is uh, particularly intriguing within and behind that is it is more the so-called developed world, which is uh, showing more the signs of this part of, of, of this stage of recovery rather than the part of the world that I've become so well known for, uh, the emerging world, which much of which showing signs of uh, slowing down. Uh, but I, as I'll go on to show in a second, I think there's some really important complicating uh, aspects of that, which means touching on one thing in particular, Howard said, is the connectivity of cities in the developed world with the emerging world, particularly China, in my opinion, become increasingly important uh, for what is going on and how to be positioned, and I'll show that more in a second. This is a, a picture about actually world growth, which uh, I know I've shown at another event here in the past, but it's updated. And um, I'm really showing it for uh, two or maybe three reasons that connect with what I've said and what more I'm going to show. So most people continue to believe that because of the mess uh, of 2008, the world can't really do uh, as well as it did before, particularly us in, in the West, so in a sort of simplified way. <clears throat> in fact, what this shows you, and this is uh, now more updated than last time I've shown this here, is despite the mess of 08 and 09, uh, if you look at the top line, world GDP growth, world GDP growth in the last decade was actually stronger than the previous two. And not only did we have the horrors of 08, 09, of course, we had the bursting of the TMT bubble 
at the start of the decade too. And despite both of those big uh, economic shocks, the world economy did better than the previous two decades. And the reason why that is the case is because of my friends down at the bottom, the so-called BRICS, and what I call uh, the growth markets, of which China is absolutely key. And uh, the last uh, column shows you what I've been assuming that all these different parts of the world will do this decade in terms of growth. And linked to this, and is highly important and being covered with increasing frequency in the media, we're now going through a phase where China is slowing down. But the way it's sort of translated into common discussion is everybody's worrying about that as opposed to realizing what the consequences are and the linkages are, which are very important for the dynamics uh, of trade and cities, as I'll come back to in a second. Here's just a uh, GSCA, just, that's, that's just a leading indicator of Chinese growth. A line going down shows that China, both lines going down. The yellow one is the actual growth. The red one is a leading indicator. So you can see that China is slowing quite a bit, which is why some people are, are worrying about it. Now, building up to the connectivity, and some of you might be thinking, what's any of this got to do with Manchester and cities? I'll, I'll get there, I'll get there. Um, we're sort of looking at a new China where... It's all about what they're trying to consume as opposed to what they're trying to produce. And this is a picture that I follow on a monthly basis, which is the relationship of Chinese retail sales to industrial production. And this line going up is, is what we want, or what we want from China, and probably what China wants as well. And you can see it's sort of erratically been going in the right direction since 2010, but not in a straight line. Now, very importantly, following it on, what really matters uh, to the rest of the world, and in especially areas that want to be at the heart of their own economic growth and connectivity with the rest of the world, is what we trade with places like China. And this is a picture of China's balance of payments uh, and focus just on red, which is their current account surplus. Um, and you can see that this is a share of GDP. Before the crisis, uh, it was more than 10%. By the end of last year, it's got to less than 3 so China's current account surplus has cut in two-thirds in five years, which is one of the reasons why people are worrying about it. Uh, because there are two parts of it, one of which most of the focus and the worry is, uh, and it's particularly topical because yesterday they had the very latest trade numbers, Chinese exports are a lot weaker than they were. And there are three reasons why that is the case. Number one is because the currency has been rising for many years, so it's not so cheap for international business to produce anymore. Any of you involved in global production businesses, if you're in the UK, uh, the government would be hoping that you're now thinking about producing more in the UK instead of China, and there's a lot of evidence of that happening. Second one linked to that is Chinese wages uh, have been rising very sharply, so even separately from the currency. They're not the cheapest place wage-wise in the world. In autos, Mexico is kind of taking over a bit from China. And thirdly, linked to that rising wealth, they're importing a lot more. And what is not discussed a lot about is the scale of the rise of Chinese imports. Yesterday's data, which showed a Chinese trade deficit for the month of February, it's not in this, uh, included a 10% rise year on year in Chinese imports. And linked to a, a paper I've just published through a European think tank, Bruegel, they carry on at this trend. Before the end of 2015, China will be the biggest importer in the world, already become the biggest exporter. And so that means the mindset of why a lot of people wanted to kind of have connectivity with China uh, in the past was all about sort of just importing stuff from there. But more and more, it's going to be for those places that have got stuff that they want, how can you get it to them? So the importance of connectivity in that regard, uh, before I get into some more things to do with the commission, is about both ports and airports and other for forms of, 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 of linkages to, and I'm highlighting China, but on a lesser degree, it's true with so many other places.